Good morning again, blooms, buds, and butterflies, and welcome to DIY Friday. DIY Friday. So we are going to be doing a quick recap of the commonly used essential oils for cooking, okay? And then we're going to talk about some replacements really quick for some substitutes in case you don't have those oils. And then we are going to get into our luscious lemon bars recipe. Who is ready, ready, ready? All right. So if you did not catch this um, last week, I believe it was, we went through the uh, the essential oils commonly used for cooking. So we're going to go through them really, really fast. You guys can always come back and watch this at any time if you need to, if you don't have a pen and paper ready. If you do, I would recommend getting like, yourself a little notebook or something to make as your cookbook. You could do this with the recipes that we make um, as far as um, the DIYs that we do with regular like cleaning things, stuff like that. Or you could do your own separate one just for food things, okay? So it's up to you guys how you want to do this. You guys do it however you want. So let's go ahead and get into it. So... The most common essential oils for cooking are basil, bergamot, black pepper, cardamom, cassia, which we talked about cassia yesterday, cilantro, cinnamon, grapefruit, lavender. I love making lavender lemonade in the summertime. Lemon, lemon grass, lemon grass, lime, marjoram, orange, oregano, peppermint, rosemary, spearmint, and thyme. Those are the most commonly used such oils for cooking. Okay, so before we get into cooking recipes, I want to mention those. So some quick substitutes. So you can, typically you can do one drop of any citrus oil for one tablespoon of zest. Okay, so in, in a recipe, if it calls for a tablespoon of zest, you can do one drop of citrus oil instead. Okay, all right, just so you guys know. If it calls for... one citrus fruit, the entire shell of zest, okay? Then you're gonna do three to 10 drops of essential oil if you're trying to get rid of the actual zest, okay? For minty oils, all right? So for things with mint, you can do one drop of any mint essential oil to one teaspoon of the dry leaves or one tablespoon of fresh mint leaves, okay? So, that's how you can substitute that. So if you guys can't write this down right now, that's funny. You guys can always go back and watch the replay and write down that. So for cinnamon and cassia, they're pretty similar. Okay. So if something calls for them, you can do one drop of cinnamon for one to two tablespoons of ground cinnamon. And you could do one drop of cassia to one teaspoon of cinnamon or ground cinnamon or cassia. So like I said, nine times out of 10, the actual cinnamon you guys have in your guys' um, kitchens right now is probably cassia, ground cassia, not cinnamon. However, you can substitute either for that, okay? Um, so for things like basil, marjoram, oregano, rosemary, cilantro, dill, etc., the more robustus herbs, okay? With them, you're going to start with just dipping a toothpick into the oil and then put it into your sauce or whatever you're making. And then add a little more as needed, okay? So only do like a toothpick, okay? For floral herbs like lavender that can be used for cooking, okay? You are only going to do the same thing. Start with just a toothpick full and then add on to more if needed. And then for other flavors, a good rule of thumb is to substitute one drop for one to two teaspoons of dry herbs, okay? For like your spicier, for like your spice stuff. So, or you can do one drop of oil for every one to two tablespoons of fresh herb. Okay, so if it's dry diced herb, one drop for each teaspoon for each teaspoon, one to two teaspoons 
one drop for each tablespoon of fresh herbs. So just remember one drop for each one to two, okay? All right, so here we go. Now let's get into this recipe, guys. So who is ready to learn how to make lush, luscious lemon bars? They sound yummy, huh? Who's gonna go make these? All right, here we go. So you need two cups of flour, a half a cup of sugar, or whatever sweetener you use. I usually use stevia because I either use stevia or I use real sugar I or I use um, honey. Okay, those are the ones I normally use. But whatever you use for sugar, I don't care what your sugar is, whatever you use for sugar, that's what you're going to use, okay? All right. <laughs> um, One-fourth teaspoon salt, four eggs, six tablespoons flour. So you need six additional tablespoons of flour, okay? You're going to need another one and a half cup of sugar. Okay, there's, there's separate reasons why we need all this, guys. So make sure you just have the items and then you guys can always do this as you go. So then you need one teaspoon of baking powder, a dash of salt, You're gonna need some lemon juice. So half a cup of lemon juice, three drops of a lemon essential oil, one tablespoon of powdered sugar. And then you can do the lemon zest if you want, but you don't need to do the lemon zest, that's optional. Okay, so you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees, mix together the flour and the salt, Cut in the butter until the dough reaches a fine crumbly texture, okay? Then you're going to press the dough into the bottom of a 9 by 13 inch pan and bake that for 20 minutes. That's going to be your crust. That's why there's two different, um, two different amounts of sugar and flour you need, okay? That's why, I don't know why they did it the way they did in this book, but that's how they did it, okay? So then while the crust is baking... In a mixing bowl, you're going to mix the eggs, okay? Then in a separate dish, you're gonna to stir together the small amount of flour, so the six tablespoons of flour. I guess I don't know why they did it the way they did. Um, you're gonna put in the smaller amount of sugar, or no, they're the same amount. So you're gonna put in the one and a half cups of sugar is gonna go into this one. So you guys can always rewrite this when you watch it later, sorry. You're gonna add your baking powder and then your dash of salt, okay? Add the flour, which was the, hang on a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, add the flour and the egg mixture into that. Sorry about that, this is your filling. So you're gonna add the flour and salt, the flour, oh my gosh. You're gonna add the flour and the eggs into your dry goods. So you're gonna add that together, mix it all up, make your, okay, sorry. Pour the mix, um, sorry, stir in your lemon juice, your water and your lemon oil. I'm sorry guys, this recipe, I should have wrote this better because this recipe sounds confusing as crap. Then you're gonna pour the mixture over your baked crust and return it to the oven for 30 minutes or until it sets, okay? So it's gonna be like a, it's not going to be, it's not actually like a, it's not like a pudding, but it's going to kind of like be like a pudding. And it's going to solidify and get harder, okay? Um, and then allow it to cool completely. And then sift the powdered sugar over the top of it, okay? If you decide to use the zest and you're going to garnish it with zest, you don't have to because it's just an added thing if you want to do it. Um, you can substitute orange oil and orange juice to make these orange bars instead of lemon bars. So, sorry that sounds so confusing. So basically what you're gonna do, oh my gosh, preheat the oven to 350. You're going to put the two cups of flour, the half a cup of sugar, and the one fourth teaspoon of salt into a bowl. You're gonna mix it all together, okay? Yeah. Then you're going to cut the butter into it until it becomes dough and it's crumbly, okay? I'm gonna explain this better. And then when it becomes crumbly, then you're going to put it into the bottom of your cake pan, okay? Nine by 13 pan. Bake that for 20 minutes until it has like a golden crust, okay? 
to become golden, that's just your crust. While the crust is baking, you're going to do your two eggs in a separate bowl, okay? Or sorry, your four eggs, not your two eggs, your four eggs into a separate bowl, okay? Then you're going to put your flour, which is the six teaspoon or six tablespoons of flour, the one and a half cups of sugar, the baking powder, and the dash of salt is all going to go in there. You're going to mix it all together, add the egg to that. Then you're going to add your lemon juice, your water. I don't remember it saying anything about water in the top. It doesn't even, oh yeah, water, half cup water. Your water and your lemon oil into there. And then you're going to pour that over the top of the crust. Bake that for another 30 minutes. There you go. That made more sense. So, holy smokes. And my internet just went out. Okay, sorry about that. My internet went out for a minute, so I know it, it froze or went black or whatever, so I waited. So that is how you make those. So if you have any questions, I will try to um, get the recipe. So I will try to get the recipe out there, but the second one I just said is the best way to do it. You can write down all the things you need and then just follow that second recipe part. Um, so sorry about the confusion. I didn't realize they wrote it so confusingly in this book, but they did. So next Friday's DIY is going to be rosemary roasted red potatoes. I am excited to do this recipe next week because um, I will be going to camp. So I will be home. So I will be able to do these recipes next week. Just like I'm planning on hopefully making my homemade um, hummus, my green hummus. Sunday because I only will be at camp tonight and then I have to come back home tomorrow. So hopefully Sunday I will get to make my greens and garlic, my doTERRA greens and garlic hummus. So, all right guys, so I will see you guys next week and we are going to be doing the roasted red potatoes. All right guys, see you guys then. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and take care. Bye guys.